the, um, the spotlights need to be turned on with the dials. I missed that earlier, but then I got it. No, the two right there. Well, welcome to worship, our second Sunday back in person here in 2021, the fourth Sunday in Lent. We're happy to see everyone, some who are here today weren't able to be here last week, so welcome. And uh, we hope that uh, things are beginning to get better. Please, uh, please do your best to keep the masks on and observe social distancing and, and head outdoors as soon as the service is over, since we have another nice morning, at least so far. I'm going to go to the west side again, I just because I think more of you park that way, and there's a little more room that way, so probably two out of three Sundays I'll go west, and once I'll go east, but today it will still be west. <clears throat> um, so that's the pre-service. Uh, is all the technology looking good? And we're up and running on the live stream. Okay, excellent. Really happy to see you on this fourth Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. <clears throat> no. 
Let us pray. O Jesus Christ, Lamb of God, out of your fullness we have all received grace upon grace. You are our eternal hope. You are patient and full of mercy. You are generous to all who call upon you. Hear us as we pray. Lord, have mercy. O Jesus Christ, fountain of life and holiness, you have taken away our sins. On the cross you were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Hear us as we pray. Lord, have mercy. O Jesus Christ, obedient unto death, source of all comfort, our life and our resurrection, our peace and our reconciliation, hear us as we pray. Lord, have mercy. O Jesus Christ, Savior of all who trust you, hope of all who die in you, and joy of all the saints, hear us as we pray. Lord, have mercy. God of love, as in Jesus Christ you gave yourself to us, so may we give ourselves to you, living according to your holy will. Keep our feet firmly in the way where Christ leads us. Help us to speak the truth that Christ teaches us. Fill us with the life that is Christ within us. Hear us as we pray. Lord, have mercy. Remaining seated for the hymn. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride, for we see ourselves pure when we are stained and great when we are small. We have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored your truth. Have mercy, O God, and forgive our sin. Return us to paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior.
Holy God, your word, Jesus Christ, spoke peace to a sinful world and brought humanity the gift of reconciliation by the suffering and death he endured. Teach all who bear his name to follow the example he gave us. May our faith, hope, and love hasten the day of peace on earth and grant us at last the gift of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us take assurance of pardon from the epistle reading for today. From Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Jesus Christ, he always rebuked. Always behaved as faithfully as Jesus had behaved. Sunday is not Palm Sunday, but the next Sunday is. So we're going to have those ready to go. We'll take them to people in the church that uh, are still not getting out, so they'll have them for Palm Sunday. And then in addition to that, just opportunity to visit, to hope and joy a beautiful spring day, perhaps with the cat and other events with the kids, and also a to-go Easter egg hunt. So all that going on this Saturday, 2 o'clock, Hope you can come, and we'll spread out on the lawn and enjoy. And please, please try to bring your own chair from home because it's it's possible, but it's a little awkward to move chairs in out <laughs> from inside, and uh, you know they get dirty and that sort of thing. So try to bring a chair from home, lawn chairs if you have them, or other things that will work. All right, we uh, we miss. We have uh, children today, so as you, as I ring, you ring. Ready? Excellent. So nice to see you and hear you. I hope that we're up here talking near the baptismal font very soon. So thank you, children. And Suzanne will lead us in.
The Gospel reading is from John chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. When longtime Christians and perhaps particularly we Protestants, read John 3.16, it is a recital of perhaps the fundamental truth of our faith. The new RSV has translated it, as we just read, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. And deep in my own memory bank from age five or six is the congregation singing the old gospel song, Love Lifted Me. But on the second time around, the words were changed to John 3.16. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, John 3.16. The King James, which many of us learned this first, had it, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. stayed too long in the territory called sheep grace. It would 
be another example of maybe one of our society's favorite things now, reward without effort, recognition without achievement. Well, unfortunately, I would say many people have reduced this John 3.16 passage to just kind of a bottom line transaction. What's in it for me? unhappy result that it may seem like that all God cares about is whether we give intellectual assent to one particular fact, and if you do, then all is settled. God will allow you into heaven forever instead of sending you to the pains of hell. But this kind of reduction, and maybe even a misunderstanding, would be like a husband or a wife saying to the other, just tell me one time that you love me and I'll buy you any house you want. It feels cheap. My fear is that John 3.16 has been made a bit cheap. And all we focus on is intellectual belief on our part and its eternal reward in God. But what keeps John 3.16 from actually being cheap rather than just having been rendered cheap by misinterpretation, is when we see John 3.16 not as the great bargain at the discount store, but rather it speaks deeply about the most basic truth about ourselves and about the God that we come to know in Jesus Christ. John 3.16 is correctly telling us as we also read today in the lesson from Ephesians, that the action words of God's initiative toward us and our response are not our merit, not our human pride, but rather grace, faith, belief, trust, loving, and giving. The great promise and hope of John 3.16 consists in our recognizing that God reaches out to us, reaches down to us at a great cost to us. That overwhelming love of God seeks in us not a flippant response, not a mechanical transaction, not a cost-free bargain, but rather the response of our whole selves to the gift of God's own self incarnate in Jesus. A deeper understanding of John 3.16 might begin with the beginning of that statement, God so loved the world that he gave. Loving and giving go together. Now you can give without loving. People do it all the time. We spend money for things that we have to have to live. We spend money for things that we sort of must have by kind of psychological necessity, uh, but the giving is marked by this internal drive, not really love. We give time, sometimes reluctantly, to our work or other obligation that we took on, but maybe our heart's really no longer in it. Sometimes we even give spontaneously on the spur of the moment, but even that can be because we don't want to look chintzy in the eyes of others. We can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. God so loved the world that he gave. And if love is defined as desiring for another person what is best for that purpose in a kind of comprehensive way and in the long term, then love expresses itself through giving, though not always in material terms. Some of us have or had very loving parents. Even though some of our parents were not able to give us every material thing we might have wanted, Indeed, the stereotype is the other way around. The unloving parent who gives to their children expensive cars and every latest new gadget, but remains emotionally distant, absorbed in their own work, 
or in their own enjoyments. God's care for us is not fully measured by the abundance of material things that we may be blessed to have. But loving expresses itself in giving, self-giving. So the parent who reads a book to her child prays and tucks him into bed is the loving parent. She has taken her time, given of herself, worked on building the bond of love that takes the child seriously and takes the child's world seriously. God's love is like that. God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved the world. Why did God love the world? Is it that the world is just so lovely, so lovable, you can't help but love the world? I don't know, a line from a sermon 35 years ago sticks with me. The preacher said, if I were God, I would kick the world to pieces. Aren't you glad I'm not God? Is the world lovely? Is it lovable? Eh, There is about our world a beauty worth saving. When seen at a distance, there's something about that, that photograph of the blue marble of earth floating in the vast blackness of space that seems to provoke in the human heart and certainly in God's heart the desire to love this world, to save it from itself. How does God so love humanity? A humanity which can be so inhumane human beings steeped in greed, eager for violence. In the Brothers Karamazov, Ivan says, I must make one confession. I could never understand how one could love one's neighbors. It's just one's neighbors, to my mind, that one cannot love, though one might love those at a distance. God loves both from a distance and up close. And in the Old Testament, the prophet Hosea portrays God as no more able to forget us than a loving mother can forget the child she once nursed. No more can God forget us than a loving father can reject the child he bent down so the child learned to walk. God persists in that sort of love for us, that sort of love for the world. God so loved the world that he gave. God gave his only begotten son. And here's where it gets tricky for some of us anyway. Why does God demand justice? Why does God, for the atonement of sin, require the death of his own son. A skeptic compared it to a wealthy man who owns an amusement park and yet required his own son to buy a ticket to enter the amusement park. And I wonder about this, especially if our image here is of an angry God who is demanding that someone must suffer because of sin, even one's own son. I need more light about that. But another way of understanding John 3.16 is to close the distance between God and the only begotten Son so that God's giving is, in fact, self-giving. God gives of God's own self and not of another with the aim of saving us who are lost. If indeed it is grounded in love, God's love requires God's self-giving. Some saints across the centuries describe their moment of conversion as being overwhelmed 
by what a couple of them called God's pure liquid love. And ultimately, we would want to be in this love divine always, as Charles Wesley wrote, and be lost in wonder, love, and praise. God so loved, not just me, not just you, but the whole world, enough to give his only begotten son, in fact, God's own self, so that you and I and the whole world might be moved toward this ideal, toward this goal of self-giving born of love. We will not do this perfectly, and often we will not even try to do it at all, because self-preservation and self-aggrandizement are never far from our minds, and they will often outrun self-giving. But we are saved in order to love. We are loved in order to give, to give of ourselves. And when we give of ourselves, the material part will naturally follow. And when we give of ourselves and give of our substance, we begin to learn what it is not to perish, but to have eternal life. believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Father of all mercies, help us to receive with grateful hearts every expression of your love for us and for all people, shown in your self-giving for our redemption in the cross of Jesus Christ. Draw us to yourself in those eternal cords of affection, that then you may send us forth as your treasured children, growing more deeply into your saving grace and love, which overcome fear and estrangement, and lead us to the glorious liberty of the children of God. May the compassion shown in the life of Jesus still touch through the power of your spirit all the woes of life, overcoming sin, healing sicknesses of body, mind, and spirit, and renewing us by your spirit to deeper trust in your guidance along our pilgrim way. Bless the leaders of our nation, our state, in our city, and all in authority throughout our country and around the world, that they may be led to wise actions and right decisions for the good of all. And now, remembering silently those on our prayer list and others, we seek your throne of grace. As our faith looks up to thee, O Lamb of Calvary, help us to look up and live, finding salvation and life in you, the eternal home you provide, where we will rejoice to find reunion with your saints who have gone before. And for now, grant us to have that stewardship of life that we may devote our energies and resources to the glorious gospel of peace we have received through Christ our Savior, in whose name we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
May the God of peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.